Hi everyone. So let us discuss about one of the most widely used substitution uh, ciphers, <clears throat> and is also called as classical encryption techniques, which is your Playfair cipher. This scheme was actually invented by Charles Whitston in 1854, but was named after Lord Playfair, who aggressively promoted the use of the cipher during the World Wars. This is a simple technique. As we have studied earlier, uh, in case of Caesar cipher and monoalphabetic cipher, we treated each character of the plain text on its own, so single character. Rather than that, what we do here is this technique actually treats pairs of letters. We call them as bigrams or digrams as single units and translates them into ciphertext units. So two uh, characters, a pair of plain text characters are considered as one unit and we also generate a cipher text in a pair. For this, how to do? It's pretty simple. We make use of a five by five matrix. The Playfair algorithm is based on the use of a five by five matrix of letters constructed using a keyword. So you need to have a keyword and based on this keyword, you will construct a five by five matrix. So the rules for filling in this five by five matrix are you have to start writing from left to right, top to bottom, first with the keyword and then removing all the duplicate letters and then with the remaining letters with I by J used as a single letter. Usually you have 26 alphabets, isn't it? So, but we have a five by five matrix which can accommodate only 25. So for this, what we are doing is you are actually writing down I and J in the same box. So let us take a simple example and start working on generation of this 5 by 5 matrix. So for our purposes, let me take uh, the keyword as monarchy. So my keyword is my keyword is monarchy. Okay. So M O N monarchy. Let me start filling up this 5 by 5 matrix according to my rules. The rules are we start from left to right. So from here, this way, and from top to bottom. First with the keyword. So let me start writing the keyword M O N A R C H Y. So I filled up the <coughs> keyword first. Now you have to observe that in this keyword, there is no repetition of letters. In case if there is a repetition of letters, you have to write it only once. Under no circumstances, a single alphabet should be repeated twice. So now let me start filling up the remaining boxes with the other letters of the alphabet. I have already A here. So what do you do? B. C is already here. So D. E. Right. E is there? No. So B. D. E. F. G. H. H is here already. So remember that I and J are given the same box. So K L M is here. N is here. O is here. So I don't repeat them. P Q R is here already. So S T U V W X Y already written down here and Z. So this is how you fill the matrix. You start with the keyword monarchy. M O N A R C H Y. I said from left to right. So this way and from top to bottom. Starting with your keyword and then proceed on to fill the remaining matrix with the remaining alphabets. Okay. Now let me show you how the encryption process is done and how this Playfair cipher actually works. So, plain text is encrypted two letters at a time according to the following rules. What are those rules? Let me start with each single rule. The first rule being if a plain text pair is a repeated letter, then insert a filler like AX. So, let me say that this is my plain text B A L L O O N. I have to divide it into pairs. So, why start B A? L L O O N. But the first rule tells that if you are having a same alphabet in a pair, you have to divide it. You have to, you can use a filler like an X. So B A L L O O N is now written as 
B A, then L X because I already removed it. Now L O O N. Under no circumstances, a pair must contain same letters. They should always be different. The second rule tells you that based on this particular uh, five by five matrix which we just constructed earlier, if both letters fall in the same row, replace each with the letter to the right. Now, if you want to encrypt a pair A R, check where A and R are in your five by five matrix. A is here, R is here. So A R is replaced with A is here. So A is replaced with R and R is replaced to its right, where there is nothing here. So you have to circle back and write down M. So A is replaced with R, R is replaced with M. In case if it is O N, O is replaced with N, N is replaced with A. So the first rule tells you that, or the second rule tells you that, if both the letters of your pair fall in the same row, just replace them with the letter to its right. This is what A R encrypts as R M. Automatically, the next rule will tell you that if they are falling on the same column, now take M U. Replace each with the letter below it. Where is M? There is M here. So M and U are falling in the same column. In that case, M is replaced with the letter below it, which is U. And if it is U, there is nothing below it. So you have to circle back and write M here. Okay. So M U encrypts to M is replaced with C and U is replaced with M. So M U encrypts to C M. So this is your third rule. The next rule is, so if they don't fall on the same row and if they don't fall on the single column, in that case, you simply each letter is replaced by the one in its row and the column of the other plain text letter in the pane. So let me take a simple example. Let me take HS. Let me take H and S. Where is H? H is here. Where is S? S is here. So HS, if I want to replace it, I have to write down the letter for H in its row and in the column of S. So H is replaced with B. What about S? You have to replace it with the letter in the row of the letter, in the row of the plain text letter and in the column of the other plain text letter. So S is replaced with P. So like this. So HS is, is replaced with BP. And let us also take another example of EA. Where is E here? E is here. A is where? A is here. So for to replace E, go check for the letter in its row and in, which is in the column as A, I or J. So you let's take I for in this instance. You can take anything. And in order to replace A, you check for the letter in A's row and in the column of E, which is M. See, EA is either converted to IM or JM as per the your uh, policy. Okay. So let just let me just wipe this off and we will take another simple example and we can uh, start working on that. Okay. So these are the five rules. Let me just repeat the rules just in case for us to easily understand. The first thing is whichever plain text is given, you have to break the plain text into pairs and you have to ensure that no pair has a repeated word, no repeated ca characters. So second rule says that take you generate your 5 by 5 matrix and in that 5 by 5 matrix, if both the letters are falling on the same row, then you replace each letter with the immediate right. And if both the letters are falling in the same column, you replace each letter with the letter below it, down it. And if they are not falling on the same row, and if they are not falling on the same column, in that case, you replace each plain text letter in its row and in the column of the other plain text letter. Now, let us take a small example and we will work with that. Consider plain text as wireless, isn't it? So, how do you break it? WI is one pair, RE another pair, LE another pair. But here, yes, as I told you that first rule says that under no circumstances, in a pair, the same alphabet must be repeated. So, SS, I cannot have it. For that reason, I divided it into two pairs, SX and SZ. Here, X and Z are used as pairing alphabets. You simply use X and Z because they are the least used uh, alphabets in the English language. Now, to in order to send this wireless uh, message, the first step, 
I broken them into pairs and now I have to write the corresponding cipher text. Let me start with this particular matrix W and I. Where is W? Here is W. Where is I? It is here. So W is replaced with the letter in its row here and in the column of the other plain text letter. If the other plain text letter is I, the column is here. This is this column and the row of W is this. So W is replaced with X. Similarly, for to replace I, you have to go here and the column of W. This is here. So W I is replaced with X and Z. R E. Where is R? R is here. E is here. So R is replaced with M, which is in the column of E. Similarly, E is replaced with K, which is in the row of E and column of R. So R E is replaced with M K. So this is what we get. And L E. So where is L here? L is here. E is here. Both of them are in the same column. So L is replaced with the letter below it, which is U. And E is replaced with the letter below it, which is L, like this. For SX, S is here, X is here. Once again, both of them are in the same column. So S is replaced with X. And for X, reverse it back or circle back to A. So SX is written as X and A. This is the pair. For SZ, so S is replaced with T and Z is replaced with X. So to send wireless, the actual ciphertext that we are sending is X, Z, M, K, U, L, X, A, T, X. This is the ciphertext that we are sending to the receiver. At the destination, to, in order to get the original plain text, which is wireless, you, you apply the same rules. It's in reverse order. So once again, he will pair them. So these are the, my pairs at my receiver. If I am the receiver, I don't know what my plain text is. I know that the keyword is monarchy. Both the sender and receiver must share the same keyword. So I will generate, I will create my own 5 by 5 matrix. Now let me start the X and Z. Where is X here? X is here. And where is G? G is here. So first things. So W. G is replaced with either I or J. And M K. Where is M? M is here. And where is K? K is here. So for M, replace with R. K replace with E. U L. So U L. So you have to replace it with what? Tell me. So for to replace U, you have to get back L. And for L, reverse, reverse order. So you have to replace it with the upper letter E. For X A, where is X? Here is X and here is A. You replace it with the letter top of it. X is yes. And for A, on top there is nothing. Circle back. X. And for T, X. T is here. X is here. So T is yes. And to replace X, replace with Z. So this is what I got. W, I, R, E, L, E, S, X, S, Z. I know that. I can, by looking at this, I will be able to understand what my original plain text is. Isn't it? W, I, R, E, L, E, S, S. This is a simple cipher. It's a very pr pretty easy to use. Okay. Let me just do one more uh, uh, example so that we, we all of us are on the same page. First, let me start with this is my keyword. My keyword is the keyword. So keyword is the secret uh, letter that is chosen. So first, let me start creating my 5 by 5 matrix. K, E, Y, W, O, R, D. Isn't it? Now start filling up all the remaining letters. A, B, C, D is already here. E is already here. So F, G, H, I, and J both in the same place. K is already written. L, M, N, O is already here. P, Q, R is already here. Yes. T, U, V, W is already here, right? X and Y is already here, which comes Z. So this is my 5 by 5 matrix. So why don't you is my plain text message. So for that, what I do, I need to simply break it up into pairs. For that reason, what would I do is W, H, Y, D, O, N, 
ty ou my first task is to break the plain text why don't you into pairs so let me start encrypting this w and h where are w w is here h is here so w it is replaced with y h is replaced with let us say that i or j my policy says that always use i first y and d where is y y is here where is d d is here so i get e a o and on o is here o is here and n is here so o is replaced with e and n is replaced with yes isn't it o and on isn't it so o and for that o is replaced with e and n is replaced with yes and ty so ty where is t here t is here and where is y y is here so t is replaced with v y is replaced with k okay and next o u so o is here u is here so o is replaced with once again e and u is replaced with z so the cipher text that you actually transmit is y i e a e s v k e z the receiver will be receiving this cipher text so once he knows that the keyword the matrix that we used is this automatically he will be able to get decrypt this entire thing and get the message or why don't you back so this is how this is the process of playfair cipher the beauty of this cipher is it is much more it has got good security uh, characteristics a lot better when you compare with that of a mono alphabetic cipher in case of a mono alphabetic cipher you are only talking about 26 alphabets on its own but here because i might have different combinations isn't it so there are 676 diagrams or digrams so one would need a 676 entry frequency table to analyze and lots of cipher text so this is lot, lot more work for an attacker to perform the crypt analysis and to do even a frequency analysis attack which is usually done on your mono alphabetic cipher for this reason because of its simplicity i say i keep on saying simplicity because the beauty of the playfair cipher is to just memorize the keyword generate the matrix and follow those simple rules it's pretty easy isn't it for this for this particular reason most of the people thought it this is impossible to break and that is that has made it one of the most widely used ciphers for many years starting in use even used by the british army in world war 1 and by the us army and other allied forces during world war 2 but frequency analysis can be done it also maintains much of your plain text structure because if you have the same plain text same pair and in the reverse order you will get the same cipher text pair if you have considerable amount of information or some sample plain text and some sample text cipher text then you can break this cipher as well if you ask me sir then why did you why did they use this particular cipher because it used to take some amount of time for the crypt analysis to break this cipher and get the plain text by that time this message has already been passed to the receiver the receiver used to decode it and implement it by the time the crypt analyst is able to break the information the validity of the information is no longer useful it has become useless now if you remember we spoke about such systems called as computationally secure if the attacker is able to break into the uh, cipher and get the key or the plain text back and by the time he does it if the information is longer no longer useful it is a waste similarly if the money spent for breaking the cipher is more than the what the actual plain text costs once again it is useless if you could maintain that we can call the system as an unconditional sorry computationally secure system okay so with that i hope uh, you understood about the plain text cipher and if there is any issues do let me know thank you very much